Andrew, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, wassalamu alaikum, peace be on all of you. The next time I get to share a stage with Loki is uh, a week tomorrow when we set up, I would say elite, but that might seem colonialist, with uh, hundreds of American citizens and millions of US dollars bound for Gaza on the Viva Palestina USA convoy to break the siege on Gaza. So uh, look out for that. We'll arrive in Cairo on the 5th and we'll, God willing, go through the Rafa checkpoint into the United Gaza Strip on the 13th of July. And Loki will be doing his rap uh, act there and we expect it to be as popular amongst the Palestinians as it is increasingly on both sides of the Atlantic. Now my comrades in the leadership of the Stop the War Coalition, Lindsay and uh, Andrew and others said from the beginning, as Lindsay recapped, that if you make war against Muslims abroad, you'll end up having to make war against Muslims at home in order to justify the war that you're making against them abroad in order to whip up the kind of hatred which may just fuel you over the finishing line of those wars as a project that has failed because of the resistance to the invasions and the occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, with some consternation, our rulers are now searching around for how they can keep some fuel in the tank for these discredited wars. I too had the misfortune to watch Question Time last night. I had the misfortune to watch the lying beast, the former editor of the gutter son, Kelvin McKenzie, spewing his bile against Britain's Muslim community. He told a story on primetime British Broadcasting Corporation about the worst thing he's ever seen. This the man who brought us the page three girl in the British press. It's the worst thing he'd ever seen, he said. He'd been on holiday in Barbados on the west coast, he helpfully elucidated. Not sure the significance of that, but he was uh, proud of it. And he'd watched four Muslim women wearing what he called burqas, a point to which I shall return, frolicking in the sea off the west coast of Bermuda. It was ridiculous. He was searching his limited vocabulary for words to describe it. And David Dimbleby didn't stop him. Some of the audience even clapped. But he sought to paint a picture of how grotesque the sight of Muslim women dressed as they pleased, swimming in the sea. Well, as it happens, once at the Dead Sea in occupied Palestine, I saw an entire busload of Hasidic Orthodox Jewish women go in to swim in the Dead Sea identically dressed. Now if I had said that and sought to ridicule, sought to whip up hostility to what I saw Jewish women do in the Dead Sea, I would never have been invited back onto Question Time again. It would have been a major storm in the tabloid press. I don't know when I am going to be invited back on uh, Question Time. It's been some time. But I wished I'd been there last night. Because I could think of something more ridiculous. I could think of something far more deserve, deserving of ridicule. And that is the liar Mackenzie bathing in the sea of Southport where the hundreds of thousands of people in Liverpool who would like to lynch him for the lies that he told about the Hillsborough disaster on the front page of the Sun could have chased him, chased him, and chased him until he got out of his death. 
But there was a more salubrious person on the panel last night. At least I assume she was, by virtue of her name, which is the rather splendid Dame Pauline Neville hyphen Jones. She's a member of the House of Lords. She's the Conservative Party's spokeswoman on security matters and will presumably be in any future Conservative government. So blue chip then, all round. She opined her own dislike, more than dislike, derision for the way some, only some Muslim women dress. She said she couldn't accept Muslim women covering their faces, even though the burqa does not necessarily cover anybody's face. She was unclear about what the nomenclature of the various garb that some Muslim women wear. She said she couldn't accept Muslim women covering their faces because this is a face-to-face -face society, she said. Not much future for radio then. I'm at, nine, at 10 o'clock this evening. I'll be talking to 800,000 people on the radio and none of them will see my face and I won't see any of their faces but we'll have, I assure you, a perfectly good conversation. Not much future then for ordering goods online. We're a face-to-face -face society or phoning a call center. Dame Pauline has obviously never done any of those. But of course, her confusion over what the various pieces of garb are actually called, as well as her assumption that all Muslim women dress the same, is one of the issues that we have to be clear about here. You see, they're not really against the burqa at all. They're against Muslims dressing differently to other people. And if they banned the burqa tomorrow, suddenly they'd discover that actually it was the hijab they wanted to ban. Then they would discover that it's all this five times a day, prayers and mosques blaring out the call to prayer. Then it would be the smell of the cooking in the restaurants. Then it would be the methods of marriage, methods of worship, methods of life. Because that's exactly what it was in 1936, a stone's throw from here, as Andrew mentioned. That's exactly what Mosley mobilized his fascist shock troops behind. He saw the East End of London as some kind of infestation, where people speak different languages to us, eat different food to us, smell differently, dress differently. And it was on that basis that he sought to whip up hatred. And so just as if they come for the Muslims today, they'll come for others tomorrow. Be sure that the burqa is only the beginning of their attempt to undress Muslim women. Kelvin McKenzie, it's none of your business what Muslim women wear. It's none of your business what Jewish people wear. It's none of your business how other people pray. But of course the gutter snipes of the far right who dredge the, the sewers for their arguments, as Seamus Milne said, are only part of the problem. Actually, I believe that more insidious still is the kind of liberal, anti-Muslim opinions which are regularly read in The Guardian, in The Independent, in The Times, in high society, around the dinner tables of Camden and Islington and Hampstead, where people who would never dream of describing themselves as racist regularly echo the bile against Muslims that we find in the sun and from the mouths of the leaders of the BNP.